deriving equations for both a one tank and a two tank system. Today I'll be deriving equations for both a one tank and a two tank system. And so to start off, we'll start with our one tank. So let's draw that out. So we have some opening here and an opening down here. And we'll put some random points, point one and point two. Right, and so to solve this, we will need to use Bernoulli's equation, which is the change delta of the pressure over the density plus the acceleration due to gravity times some change in position plus the velocity squared divided by two. And so to start out with this, we'll write zero equals, so it's for our change in position, so from one and two. We'll do pressure at two minus the pressure at position one divided by the density plus the acceleration due to gravity times the change in position plus the change in velocity, so v2 squared minus v1 squared over two. And that all equals zero. And so what we can see here is that the cross-sectional area at one is a lot bigger than two. So you can see that here, so the fluid height's up here, that cross-sectional area is much bigger than the exit right here. And so that being said, the velocity at one will be zero. So we can just cross that out. And we can also see that the altitude or the height of these two points are the same value. So you're just subtracting the same value. So that'll also be zero. So that term can be canceled. So then with this, we have zero equals P2 minus P1 over the density plus V2 squared over two. And so then from this, we can see that the pressure is zero over here. And then we can also see from this equation that pressure equals the density times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. So we can plug that in for P1. So then we'll have negative, so yeah, that'll be zero. So we'll just cross that out. Negative rho GH over rho plus V2 squared over two equals zero. So from here, we can see that the rows will cancel and then when you solve for V2, we will get, let's write this over here, V2 equals the square root of two G H. And this is gonna be useful once we move on for our two tank system. So that being said, let's draw out our two tank system, which I'll put over here. So we have tank, goes over into another tank. Draw that. And then there's an opening in this second tank right here. So then we'll say there's some water level right here in tank one, and then a water level that's a little bit lower in tank two. And so there's some height one, there's some height of the fluid, height two, in the second tank. And then there's also the velocity of the fluid going from one to two. And so with that being said, we want to solve for our volumetric flow rates going from one tank to the other. So the volumetric flow rate from tank one to tank two is going to be equal to the uh, velocity times the cross-sectional area. So we'll have some cross-sectional area from one to two times the velocity from one to two. And then we're also gonna have the volumetric flow rate um, for tank two coming out there at that exit. And that will equal the cross-sectional area just at point two times the velocity of the fluid at point two. 
And so this velocity here, we kind of solved a variation of it up here. So we have Q12, the volumetric flow rate from tank one to tank two, equals the cross-sectional area from one to two times radical 2g. And then we're going to put the absolute value of the difference in heights. And the reason that we do that is to account for the case in the scenario where H2 could be higher than H1. So if we were to do this, we wouldn't necessarily need the absolute value because it'll be a positive number. But if H1 were to be less than H2, we would get a negative number under the square root, which would not give us a valid number. So we're going to use the absolute value here to account for all cases. And then we're going to do a similar process for Q2. Q2 equals cross-sectional area 2 times 2GH2. So just this fluid of the height, or height of the fluid over there. And so this being said, what if we were to add streams of fluid going into the top? Because we said earlier that this is open. So let's say we have some Q in one and then some Q in two. And so with that, we can then try and solve how the volume of each tank will change with respect to time. So, let's write that out. Change in volume of tank one with respect to time is equal to, and so as you can see here, we have Q1 going in, so we're going to be adding Q1 or QN1 and then subtracting because this Q12 is moving from this tank to Q2, as you can see from the name from one to two. So it'll be minus Q12. And then to solve for the volume, uh, the change in volume with respect to time for tank two, it's a little bit more, but not much. So we have dt2 over dt equals, so we're adding Q into, into the tank from the top. We are also adding Q12 because it's coming from tank one into tank two. So this volume will be increasing with that volumetric flow rate. So then Q12, and then we're subtracting the volumetric flow rate going out of this tank. So that'll be Q2. And so that being said, we can start plugging in and solving a little bit higher up, so it's easier to draw. And so Q in one is just some unknown value at the moment. Q one T equals Q in one minus Q one two, which we saw for up here, just right there. Minus cross-sectional area from 1 to 2 times the square root of 2g h1 minus h2. So in order to account for the height of the fluid in each tank being greater than or less than, we also are going to want to uh, do something with this subtraction because in some instances, it could be adding back into the tank. So we're going to take this Q12 value and then put, so right now we'll put minus, and then we're going to put in parentheses the sine of H1 minus H2. So it's not the value of H1 minus H2, but the sine of it. And then that will be multiplied by that value for Q12. So then that'll be A12 times the square root of 2G absolute value H1 minus H2. 
And then we're going to do the same thing for uh, the second tank. So B, B2 over BT equals Q in 2 plus Q12. And so same thing, we're going to need a sign in case it were to be going the other way. So we'll put, but for now we'll put minus for this one and plus for that one. So we'll put sign of H1 minus H2 times the area of 1, 2 times the square root of 2G absolute value H1 minus H2. And then we, all did, we have the other term for Q2, the volumetric flow rate leaving tank 2. So that will be subtracted from it. That'll be minus cross-sectional area position or at tank 2 times square root of 2G H2. And so these can be solved, but they need initial conditions which will be used in a later video where I code this out and then plug in an initial condition. So after looking at my work, I noticed that there wasn't necessarily an error, but I should have explained further uh, for the change in volume with respect to time. So this dv1 over dt and then dv2 over dt could also be rewritten as the derivative of the height 1 over dt times the cross-sectional area. So it would be like the cross-sectional area of this tank, and then we'd do the same thing. So it equals this value here. So this, the derivative, or the change in height of the fluid in tank 1 with respect to time, times the cross-sectional area is equivalent to the change in volume of tank one with respect to time due to the fact that the cross-sectional area is constant and doesn't change. And so the same thing can be written uh, for the second tank as well. And we can write that as the cross-sectional area of tank two times dh2 over dt equals this value here. And so that'll be important when coding later. Hi. Right. Today we'll be revisiting the problem that was solved earlier with respect to those flow rates uh, for the tanks. Um, and so what we have now are initial conditions that we'll plug in and then solve for the height as it changes with time. And so what we have first is we have our first tank with a radius of four meters, our second tank with a radius of two meters, and they're connected uh, with a pipe which has a cross-sectional area of 0.2 meters squared. And the second tank is going to drain out, and this hole where it drains out is going to have a cross-sectional area of 0.2 meters squared. And both of these tanks, similar to before, have an inlet flow, and they're at uh, initial steady state heights of 5 and 3 meters, respectively. And we also have uh, conditions where we have a switch in inlet flow rate. And so at 100 seconds, we're going to have our inlet flow rate reduced to 80% of its initial value. And then at 200 seconds, the flow rate is going to be increased to 250% of its steady state value, and that's for the first and second tank. All right, and so now that we have that, we can get started. And what we have up here in these lines of code, I found that it wasn't important to type these out, but rather just explain what they are because it'll waste some time. And so what we have are the SciPy, which is going to help us integrate and solve our initial value problem. We have uh, JAX and NumPy to help solve stuff. And then we have uh, stuff from Plotly that's going to help us make these subplots, which will be able to see our height as it changes with respect to time graphically. And so let's put in our knowns first. And so that's going to be our radius 1 is equal to 4. Radius 2 is equal to 2 meters. And then these are the radiuses, so we're going to need to find our cross-sectional area, which will be helpful later. And from our last video, you can see why we will need these. So we'll do AC1 is equal to jmp.pi. And that is going to be times the radius squared. So we'll do R1 and then squared. And 
and then we're going to do the same thing for the second tank's cross-sectional area. All right, so we're just going to change this. All right. So then after this, we are going to have the cross-sectional area of both the pipe and the exit. So that's going to be cross-sectional area from 1 to 2 is equal to 0 0.2 meters. And then the cross-sectional area of the second tank, that exit, is going to also be 0.2. And so we also have these initial heights, these heights that are uh, of the fluid in the tanks uh, at steady state. And so these are going to be the height of the fluid in the first tank initially, so H1I is equal to 5 meters, and then H2I is equal to 3 meters. And so from here, we're going to just calculate uh, values for the flow rates, which will then be used and put into a function later. So we have Q12, so that is the flow rate from tank 1 to tank 2 going through that bottom pipe this is going to be initially. So that's going to be the cross-sectional area, so A12 times, and then explained in the last video why it was the times the sine of the difference in fluid height. So it's going to be JNP dot sine of H1I minus H2I. And then that is going to be multiplied by the square root of 2GH. And so we're going to put the square root of 2G as SQ2G just to make it simpler and easier for us. So that's going to be GNP dot square root. And this is going to be uh, 2 times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And so that is going to be multiplied by that cross-sectional area from 1 to 2. And then times, and this is the difference in height, and it's going to be the absolute value of that because we don't want a negative under the root. So we're going to have JMP dot square root of so JMP dot absolute value of height 1 initially minus and it's going to be a positive number because you can see here this the height of the fluid in tank one is five to begin with and it's greater than three so it doesn't really matter but in the instance where it wouldn't be lower we need to put that so then we'll have the flow rate from coming out of two initially and that is going to equal the cross-sectional area of the, the exit which is 0.2 so we'll just have that as a2 times the square root of 2g and then times the j and p and the square root and this is just going to be the height of the second or the height of the fluid in the second tank and because these are steady state um, we'll see why these next flow rates are the way they are so Flow, the inlet flow rate going into tank one. So we'll do that flow rate of one inside and then I'll put another I for initially. And because it's steady state, it's just going to be equal to Q12I. And so the flow rate, the inlet flow rate initially for tank one is equal to the initial flow rate going from one to two. And the similar logic is going to be used for this the uh, inlet flow rate for going into tank two. So that's going to equal Q2I minus the flow rate from one to two initially. And so now that we have this, I'm going to make sure that this runs correctly and then we will continue on with the function. All right, so now we can get started with our function, which will solve for, it'll be the derivative of the height with respect to time. So how is this height and height of the fluid in each tank going to change as time goes on? And so we'll define it as dhdt. 
and it's going to have the independent ve uh, variable of time, and then the vector, which will be h for height. And so because of Python indexing, we'll just label this real quick. So the height of the fluid in tank one is going to be the vector, the first vector, is going to be zero. And then same thing for the second tank. So it'll be one. And from here, we can take these initial flow rates and then just change them and get rid of the initial part because it'll calculate values with different uh, times and heights. So we'll copy and paste that. And then what we're going to do is just get rid of the initial part. So then what this function is going to return are two arrays, uh, one for each of these flow rates. It's going to return the first one will be just an array, like I said earlier. And it'll be first one's going to be q1 in. And this is going to be a function of time, which I'll solve for later. And then this will be minus uh, Q12, so that will be the volumetric flow rate from tank 1 to tank 2. And then all of that will be divided by the cross-sectional area. And this will be for tank 1. So now that we have that, we'll do the second array. And so this will be the height, or the change in height of the fluid in tank two as time goes on. So this one will be Q2 in. And this will be a function that I'll make later with respect to time. Uh, plus the volumetric flow rate from one to two. And then minus the flow rate going out of tank two. And all of that is going to be divided by the cross-sectional area of the exit. All right. All right, so now that we have that, we can move forward and we will make these functions for the flow rates, the inlet flow rates. So let's scroll down. But before we do that, we actually need to take into account this switch in uh, inlet flow rate, which was specified here. So this first tank is going to be reduced to 80% of its initial flow rate, and the second one is going to be increased to 250% of its initial flow rate. And so we'll just define this as a switch function because it's going to switch uh, flow rates. And so this will be have arguments for time, the first value, its initial value, uh, the second value it's changing to, the time where the switch occurred, and the scale. And the scale basically shows how sharp of a switch it is, which we will see later. And so this will return a sigmoid function, which is jacked.nn.sigmoid. And this will be time minus the time switch, so t switch. And then this will be divided by the, uh, the scale. Mm -hmm. All right. And then 
then from here, we will multiply that by the difference in values, so V2 minus V1, and then this will then be, we will add the first value, first initial flow rate. And so what this does is it's going to change the graph of what it'll look like to fit our conditions and what we want. And so then from there, we can move on and do our inlet flow rates, the functions of those with uh, time as the argument. So we'll do define q1 in. All right, and so what this is going to return is a switch function that we just made. It's going to take time, the initial value, which is our initial inlet flow rate, so Q1 and I, and then it's getting reduced. So our once we switch, the flow rate is getting reduced to 80% of what it was. So it'll be 0 0.8 times Q1 and I. And then the time that it switches is going to be at 100 seconds. And then the scale we're going to be putting it equal to 1. So it's because it's one, it's going to make this um, change in the switch. It's going to be almost instantaneous, which is what we want for this. And so what we have here is very similar to what we'll need for the second inlet flow rate. And so we will copy that. And, but we'll change it to fit the conditions for the second tank. And so this will be Q2, and now it's getting increased 250%, so 2.5 and 2. And this is happening when time equals 200 seconds. And so then from here, we can move forward and solve our initial value problem. And then once we have that, we can then graph. All right, so after... Uh, running this code that I wrote, uh, I ran into some errors, and a lot of it had to do with the parentheses I had. So I did end up switching and adding parentheses and making sure that the order of operations was correct. And so I did that here. I added the parentheses at the end. I added brackets where I didn't need to. So I fixed that and then added parentheses where needed. And so now that we have that fixed, we can move on. And what we're also going to do now is put in another known. And so this will help us with our solving and graphing of the height as it changes with time. So we'll just do the last time. So we'll do the end time. So T end. And that is equal to, and we'll just do, it just really needs to be higher than 200 seconds, which is the specified time down here. So we'll just put 500 for now. And that can be changed. And so now that we have that, we can begin uh, solving. So we'll do a result is equal to solve underscore IPP and then this is going to accept inputs so the first thing we have we can see right here is the function and so that's going to be DHQT and next we have our time span and so like I said earlier that's the reason why we're adding this T end so we're going to start out with just our initial time to T end all right and then next is going to be our initial state. So that's going to be our H1I, which is our height of the fluid in tank one initially. And then also our second fluid height in tank two initially. All right. And then after that, we'll choose the method with which we will solve um, our differential equation. So method equals, and we're going to do the Radu method. And then after that, we're going to have our dense output equal to true. All right. And so what we're going to need to do is have a set of times um, spaced out evenly. So we'll use our lin space function for that. So we'll name it as 
time plot. This will also be used for our x-axis on our graphs. So that is jmp.win space. And it'll be from 0 to our end time, which will be 500 seconds in this case. And so we're going to have 501 evenly spaced points. All right, so now we can solve it. So we'll do solve, so SOL for solve equals res.solve, and then this is going to be uh, the time plot. So that uh, evenly spaced points for time are going to be used to calculate the values for our height as it changes. All right. And so let's just run everything here before we do that, make sure it's all good. All right. And so there's an error here. And it says that t is not defined. So what I'm going to do is go back and look at this code and make sure that everything's up to date before we can continue forward. All right. So after looking at the code, I saw that it was the problem was right here in this res equals. So when we're solving our initial value problem, I put down t, and t wasn't defined in this instance. So it was supposed to be zero, and which I had right down here, but now it's correct, so it should work. So c through. All right. And in addition to that, I've just copied down the uh, stuff for the graphs. I felt that it is just a waste of time to type it out, but rather just to explain it would be more worthwhile. So what we have here is just going to make our subplots. And so there's going to be one row for the graphs to be in, and there's going to be two columns. So there's going to be two different spaces for there to be graphs, which is what is going to be needed because we're going to have our left side be for the change in height as time goes on, and then the second one will we'll see that switch in inlet flow rate for both tanks. So as you can see here, we're making a plot, we're having our x-axis equal to the time plot, and then for our y-axis, we're doing that first uh, dimension of the array for this solve right here. And we're gonna name it uh, the height, or h1 for the height of the fluid in tank one. And this is going to be on the left side. So you can see they're all going to be in row one, but these first two are going to be in column one because they're going to be on the left side, on that left graph. And so for these last two lines, we're making two more uh, uh, plots. So for our x-axis, is going to be time plot for both of them. But we're going to have our inlet flow rate as time changes. So our, our argument is time plot. So it's not an array, but rather a function for this one, and so we're gonna name that our inlet flow rate, so Q1 in. And this is gonna be on the graph on the right, so it's gonna be column two. And then the same thing here, just with our flow rate for tank two. And so then we can run it, just make sure everything's running first. So as you can see here, two graphs pop up that show this. Um, not sure if these are correct, so I'm going to do some analysis on it and make sure that everything in my code is right before I tell you that it is fully correct. But this, the graphs are there in the way they should be. So there should be H1 uh, and H2, and then there will be Q1 in and Q1 or Q2 in. So I'll be back and I will let you know what needs to be changed, if anything. All right, so after looking at the code, I saw there was a problem. And the problem was with the order of which I did the functions and the switch and all of that. So I just put this function that was originally under our known values. I then moved it under these two functions here. And then because of that, we can see that our flow rate is now exactly what we want it to be. And then this will decrease and then increase. And as you can see here, it starts at five, decreases a bit. Once the time switches and that flow rate, uh, inlet flow rate changes, we see an increase again. And then same thing here, it begins to decrease. We then see that inlet flow rate change and it increases. And from that, we can see that our code is done and that we can graphically represent the change in height with respect to time.